In this video, we will be discussing electrocardiograms, how they work, and how they relate to the stages of the heart we talked about in the last video. So how does an ECG work? A negative and positive lead are attached to the skin of the individual to monitor the electrical current in the heart tissue with voltmeter. When there is no, no electrical stimulus and current flow, there is no difference in the membrane potential and the voltmeter reads zero. When electrical stimulus occurs in the heart muscle, it begins to depolarize. As it says on the slide, because of the difference in charge, currents flow between the depolarized and polarized muscle. Some of this current is conducted to the skin electrodes. Depolarization moving towards a positive electrode generally results in a positive current flow. Once all of the cardiac muscle is depolarized, there is again no difference in the membrane potential, so the reading goes back to zero. There are three major components to an ECG. First, the P wave, which represents the depolarization of the atria. Then the QRS complex, which shows the wave of ventricle depolarization. And lastly, the T wave, which depicts the repolarization of the ventricles. Notice that the T wave looks similar to the P wave, even though the P wave is depolarization and the T wave is representing repolarization. So why is that? When the muscle is completely depolarized, there is no difference between the membrane potentials and the current flow is zero. In the ventricle, the most recently depolarized muscle is the first to repolarize. Repolarization moving away from a positive electrode results in a positive current. Therefore, depolarization moving towards a positive electrode is a positive current, and repolarization moving away from a positive electrode is also a positive current. This diagram shows the events of the heart compared to the results of an ECG. Feel free to pause the video and take a longer look. When performing an ECG, the electrodes are attached in three places on the body, forming an imaginary triangle, the right arm, left arm, and left leg. Each lead consists of a positive and negative electrode. By looking at the depolarization of the heart from different leads or views, we can see how the depolarization travels in space, which can be used diagnostically to tell us information about the heart. We use a vector analysis in order to do that. The mean electrical axis represents the average direction of current flow throughout the QRS complex, which you will remember is ventricular depolarization. Let's practice by looking at these different example leads and sum the positive and negative aspects of the QRS complex. Here on the first lead, we find the zero and then record that the most positive aspect is plus 11 above the zero and the negative aspect is two below. 11 minus two equals nine. So we take that number to the axis on the graph corresponding with lead one and plot the number. Then we draw a line perpendicular to the axis through the dot. Now for the second lead. Here the positive aspect is six above the zero and the negative aspect is one below. So 6 minus 1 is 5, and that is the number we'll plot on the graph. This time we'll plot the number on the axis corresponding with lead 2, and again draw a perpendicular line through it. Okay, last one. Here the positive aspect is 1.5 above 0, and the negative aspect is 6 below. This leaves us with a number of negative 4.5 to plot on the lead 3 axis. Again, we draw a line perpendicular to the axis through the number. Notice that all of the lines intersect at one point. This intersection is the mean electrical axis and is reported in degrees. In this case, it is zero degrees. Deviations in the electrical axis occur for many reasons. Here are listed some of those reasons. Lastly, in your lab, you may encounter vector cardiograms. These are plotted in a similar manner as the mean electrical axis. However, the vector is calculated from the positive or negative amplitude of the recording at several points during the recording. Negative is not subtracted from the positive. Therefore, you will determine how the vector changes throughout the cardiac cycle by putting it at various time points, such as the ones listed on the slide. Shown as a typical vector cardiogram of the QRS and T of the ventricular beat.